I think Instacart's a great position because now they're kind of like the Switzerland to work with the other 98% of the grocery business in America. By the way, my understanding on Instacart mm -hmm. is that they just signed a deal several months ago mm -hmm. with Whole Foods mm -hmm. for five years. Mm -hmm. How is that going to get changed or not? As I mean, would Amazon buy them out of that deal? What do you think is going to happen here? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question for Apoorva, the CEO of Instacart. Um, but I think my, my bet is on the fact that this has been a wake-up call to every other grocer that they need to be able to offer this kind of technology and service. So that was early Instacart investor Alexis Ohanian back in 2017 talking about a shakeup in the grocery sector. Today, Instacart is headed to the public markets, pricing at $30 a share. And joining us is the very same Alexis Ohanian. He's the founder of venture firm 776, the co-founder of Reddit, of course, frequent guest here on Squawk Box. Um, Okay, you were right, because there were so many questions being asked at that point about whether Whole Foods Amazon deal was going to take out Instacart completely. Mm. That's what people thought at the time. Um, didn't happen. So now what? Well, you know, this is also very humbling seeing that and realizing how much more gray hair I have. Uh, but <laughs> that was before the Reddit turnaround, so, so be it. But what was so exciting was Apoorva, uh, who is the founder and CEO, had this original vision 10 years ago of creating a really efficient way, not just to do the shopping, but all the back-end logistics, everything else, as well as a vision for higher margin things like advertising. And I think going forward, we're gonna to start to see this really unlock. So many consumers are now making their decision, not wandering down an aisle, getting an impulse buy because it's of some end cap. They're making that decision based on what they're seeing on their phone in Instacart, and I, I think it presents an interesting revenue opportunity going forward. So, Alexis, you were an early investor. I think it was Series C, which went at about $13.31. Oh, yeah. Um, it's a good time so to invest. You are in the money because this is now coming out at $30. They've been raising the price range over the last week, week and a half or so, but that still only values the firm at $10 billion versus the $39 billion it would have been valued at a couple of years ago at the last round. There were mm -hmm. other investors who were angry that they, they didn't go public at that time. The same time you saw DoorDash and Airbnb going mm -hmm. out. What happened? And as an investor, how do you feel about it? Well, look, this is why I love early stage investing, because when you invest in the first round, these sorts of things become much less uh, sort of crucial to making the return. Like, I think every company in this space saw a huge lift during COVID. They saw a huge bump because so many of us were, were in many ways forced to start doing our shopping or food ordering, what have you, online. There was a huge premium, just like this other ZERP premiums that we saw. Things are coming back down to earth. And I think at the end of the day, Instacart is setting itself up now for success in this world, the post-COVID world, where it knows there are gonna need to be these higher margin revenue streams and, and where I think they can still build a very robust business. I don't wanna Monday morning quarterback it. They're going public today. It's exciting. This is you know a decade plus of, of great work. Do you intend to hold the to come. So one of the things we do as a matter of policy is we actually distribute to all of our LPs. That's so okay. it's up to them to choose their own adventure. Um, what but, about you personally? Uh, for me personally, it depends if my wife wants another house. I don't know. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, I'm not a public markets investor. I got some really good advice from Fred Wilson early in my career. I think she right. can buy any house she wants. <laughs> I know, I know. But <laughs> got I, nothing I to do with your house. I know, I know. Yeah. But very, very good point. A good but, answer, though. I, <laughs> but right I, answer. The I, right I, answer. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to stay right. married another six years. Right. Uh, but, I think well, the reason I ask is there's a number of big venture capital firms that look like they're selling mm. today as part of this. So I think a lot of the folks who look at this and say, well, Pepsi's coming in, but all these other guys are going out. Mm. How am I supposed to look at that as a long-term play? It, it, it might have been a very good investment 10 years ago. The question is, is it a good investment today, which is for a lot of people who are watching this, the first time they would even have the opportunity to invest in it. Right. So that one, admittedly, is a bit above my pay grade. You know, so much of, and this was good advice from Fred Wilson, who's a legend in the space on the early stage investing side. You know, we are holding this investment for a decade. So, so when you're waiting for right. liquidity for 10 years, there's much more of an instinct to say, okay, well, let me at least get a good chunk of return on this for waiting this long. Here in the public markets, we'll see, uh, but I feel so confident in the technology they've built. This is more than just the app that you see, right? There is so much more logistics on the back end, and I'm, I'm happy I got to come here and look right from that clip six years ago, in part because every other grocer in the country realized they needed to adapt and partner in some way because this is the user experience people want. And user experience tends to win long term. I mean, the, the questions being raised today, just like there were being questions, uh, questions that were raised when you were here in 2017, today it's DoorDash is now mm. um, having 
hundreds of thousands. Well, I think they added 100,000 non-restaurant um, partners, and a lot of those are grocery stores. So they're going after the business, too. And then the question becomes, when you have inflation on the rise, groceries more expensive, if the economy is turning down at some point, will consumers still pay a, pay a premium to have somebody else shop for their groceries? These are valid concerns, for sure. I know, the even just speaking as an individual user, the value prop of Instacart got way more compelling once I had my first kid. And even now, with a one-month-old at home, the ability to be able to scroll through and say, hey, it's Tuesday, let's get tacos, or I just want some ice cream. Like, the, the, whether it's the impulse buy or the necessity of I just need this now, um, that has power, that has value, and I think the market's going to keep showing that there are needs for this. They're going to get fulfilled by folks uh, at a price point that, that the, makes sense. The, the question, though, I'd add to that, though, is it's what is the growth path for this company? And if the growth issue is the advertising piece mm -hmm. or even the enterprise side piece, which is where Another so much of the money has come from, yeah. they're all connected, meaning if you're not using, mm -hmm. I'm not, I, I unfortunately am not using the app nearly as much as I used to. Which means that I'm not able to. I'm not. I'm not an eyeball for the advertising. Mm -hmm. So you can't sell me more advertising, and it's unclear. And then on the enterprise side, it's a similar similar story. Maybe a little bit less so. So that I think is the sort of larger question mark over this company. Well, and I can say I don't have inside information, but the right. way I think about it and the things that intrigue me, we talk about advertising. Um, it, it's interesting. I was shocked to learn how big of a brand Kirkland was. Uh, you know, even bigger than Nike. And I think distribution, if we've learned anything, distribution really matters. Instacart has a tremendous relationship with the people buying their groceries, whatever those needs are. And I can think of a myriad of ways that they start to then capture even more uh, of that attention and that value by saying, hey, we have our own lot of products, we have other things. I think increasingly, the same way that end cap used to be really valuable storefront in a supermarket, there's, there's prime placement there to be able to show a customer exactly what they need exactly the right time in a way that, you know, in a couple taps gets them what they need. And I, I think there's there's some enduring qualities to that, but uh, right. like you well, pointed out, time will tell.